All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We hope you are safe and sound wherever in the world you are. Welcome back to the College Success Mastery Virtual Summit 2020. I'm Joey Ban from Edu Experts, your host on this summit. Well, today is the final day of our summit, and I'm excited to be joined by Elvin Tai, our first speaker on the summit today. Elvin Tai is the Director of International Outreach at Green River College in Washington, USA. Over the last 15 years, Elvin has helped many international students transfer to top universities in the US. As a former academic advisor at the college, Elvin has built a unique approach to educating and guiding international students to meet and exceed university admissions requirements. Elvin specializes in helping international students aiming to attend top-ranking universities. In his session, Elvin will guide us on the essential steps to choosing the right university. All right, so we've got um, quite a few people in the room now. Um, well, maybe you can type in the chat where you are watching this from. So type your country. Where are you watching this from? And let's welcome Elvin onto the summit. Hi, Elvin. Hi, uh, good morning, Joey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? What time is it over at your place now? It's about 8 p.m. on a Saturday night here in Seattle, Washington right. State. Right, right, right. Great. So we've got students watching from Japan, from Malaysia, and some from Mongolia. Okay, so without further ado, I will hand the session over to you, and I'll be back after your presentation uh, to do the Q&A with you. All right? Thank so over much. to you, Elvin. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone here, wherever you are watching us from. And I believe this session will also be recorded. But for those of you who are currently online, if you could just let us know where you are logging in from, we would really appreciate it. So I'm seeing Japan from our chat window. Is there anybody else from any other country? Is there anybody else from any other country logging in? Please let me know. All right, so you know, shortly, oh, we have Malaysia, thank you very much. And we have, oh, somebody from Yokohama as well. Thank you very much for logging in and spending your precious Sunday with us to learn more about how to select a university. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we have a majority of students logging in from Japan as well as Malaysia. So right now, I just did a screen share um, so today's topic is called Back to Basics, the Fundamental of University Selection. Okay. Now, uh, a quick intro about myself, uh, just in case you would like to stay in touch with me right in front of you, you have access to my email address as well as my phone number or some of the social media contact information or platform that I use, uh, primarily WhatsApp, Line, and Viber. So feel free to do a screenshot or copy it down on a piece of paper and feel free to uh, contact me if you have any questions after today's presentation. Uh, so just a quick intro about myself. So my name is Alvin Tai again. I'm the Director of International Outreach at Green River College. And I started working for this college about 16 years ago. And I started my career as an academic advisor. So what that means is that I help international students to identify not only the major, but I also help students to identify which university they want to go to. And then ultimately, I will help them to apply and successfully transfer them to that university. So it has been a very rewarding um, career for me, having seen students from the very on start of their education career all the way through graduation. So that university selection process is very, very uh, critical and important for a student's success and their future. And today it is my honor to be able to share some of my experiences and some of the learnings that I have acquired over the last 16 years working at Green River College. So today's agenda is very, very simple, all right, which is to help all of you here who have logged in as well as those of you who might be watching over uh, from Facebook to explore different ways to evaluate a university. Now, for those of you who are currently Zooming us live, all right? So let me pose this question to all of you. 
Could you tell me how many colleges and universities are there in the U.S.? So using your chat group function, could you please tell me how many universities and colleges do you think there are in the U.S.? Okay, please jot down, just give it a good guess. Because for those of you who are thinking about going abroad to study, I believe you have a lot of options. All right, just countries itself, all right, obviously U.S., Canada, um, you have UK, Australia being the mainstream or some of the most popular destination, but you also have Singapore, you have Spain, you have New Zealand, you have Switzerland, you have a lot of different countries. But just in US itself, you do have a lot of options as well. So how many universities and colleges do you think there are in the US? All right, so I'm reading the chat window right now. I have uh, somebody from Japan say we have about 3,000. Uh, David says we have about 5,000. Brian Ip says we have about 10,000. Uh, Salta says we have about 5,500. All right, so I'm sure this is something that you can Google to get a more exact and more precise answer to my question. I'm gonna head back to, oops, I'm gonna go back to my screen right here. Of the previous okay now there are about 5,300 colleges and universities in the US with so many choices how is it humanly possible for you to pick the best one for yourself and I'm sure it is a very daunting task for you to even think about what are some of the schools that are out there now at this point, I would like you to consider these three questions, okay? Because there is a lot of misconceptions about universities. First question, if I have not heard of the university, is it then not a good school? Or second question, if the university is low in ranking. Now, by the way, ranking is probably one of the most common way whereby a parent or student would use to assess whether it's a good university or not. So if the university is low in ranking, does it mean that it's not a good school? Or if the school is not expensive, all right, if it's really affordable or really cheap, does it mean that it's not a good school at all? Okay, so let me present to you, uh, let me present to you, oh, let me stop share here really quickly and jump to a different website here. Let me present to you, um, the Ivy League schools or universities within the U.S. There are eight Ivy League schools in the U.S. And for those who are logged in right now, do you know what those eight universities are? Because those are highly competitive and highly ranked universities that a lot of international students want to go to. Does anybody know what are those eight universities? And I'm going to do a quick screen share with you here. And those eight Ivy League schools would include Princeton, Harvard, Columbia, Yale, UPenn, Dartmouth. Now, I wonder how many of you have actually heard of the school Dartmouth College. If I have not told you it's one of the one of the eight Ivy League schools, would you have even considered to apply to that university? How about Brown University? or Cornell University. These are some of the top ranking universities in the US. I'm gonna get out of my screen share here. Stop here, oops. Sorry for the, uh, the hiccup here. Let me hit back to my PowerPoint presentation here, okay? Let's go back. Thank you very much. Now, I would invite those of you who are logging in right now to really consider what are some of the most common ways for you to evaluate a university. Or so using the chat group, all right, chat window, please type in what do you think are some of the most common ways to evaluate a university? As I mentioned a while ago, ranking is probably one of the most widely used options to pick a university. Maybe tuition fee, scholarship, what else do you think is out there? What are some of the methods that you would use? Okay, somebody just responded majors. Obviously, you want to go to a university that definitely offers your major so that you can study the subject that you want to study. 
so that you can acquire the skills and knowledge for you to pursue your career and to be successful in life. All right, so I have another participant that mentioned alumni. Very good. So if you have friends or relatives or a classmate who have attended a particular university, right, you may get some recommendations from them, right, to know if that is a good school or not. So what are other common ways to evaluate a university? There we go. All right, so I randomly picked out nine of the most common ways that I have personally encountered as an academic advisor while working at Green River College, whereby students would use to identify which university they would like to go to. Ranking obviously is very, very important, but not always the case. Why so? Let me give you an example, okay? Um, with that, I'm going to log out of my uh, PowerPoint presentation here and present to you a particular website. All right. Um, there we go here. There, there we go. All right. So if you Google um, the top 15 colleges with the highest earning upon graduation, by the way, just to uh, um, um, explain a little bit clearer with regards to some of the terminology that I use or that we use in the US, college and university means the same thing, all right, in the US. It takes four years to complete a bachelor's degree in the US. So you could actually get it from a college or a university. So right in front of you is a website that I randomly Google. And I was curious to find out which university produce some of the highest paid graduates in the United States. And let me share that list with you, all right? As I scroll down the list, and I got really, really intrigued by some of the schools that have been listed here. Rank at number 15, Harvard University. Of course, who does not know Harvard University, all right? Then we go down to rank number 14, SUNY Maritime College. And how many of you have really heard of SUNY Maritime College? And what about Rose Holman Institute of Technology, Stevens Institute of Technology? Now, are these really good school? If Fork actually lists them as some of the well-known school that produce the top highest paid graduates in the US, I would assume that they are a pretty good university. But let's us explore one particular university that I would like to talk about today, which is number one. Harvey Mudd College University. The starting salary of their graduate average at about 88,000 US dollar per year. Higher than graduates from MIT, Harvard, Caltech, and Stanford. How is that possible? How many of you have actually heard of the school Harvey Mudd College? So let me take you to their website, okay? And if you want to look at the quick specs about this particular school, Harvey Mudd College is located in Claremont, California. Their tuition fee is about 74,000 US dollar, right? It's very, very expensive. But look at this particular number here, which I will highlight right now. The alumni, the average alumni salary is about 158 US thousand dollars per year. And that is very, very, very high in comparison to other graduates from other university. So ultimately, what makes Harvey Mudd College such a great school that nobody really knows about? So if you don't know about the school, would you even apply to that university? So that has been my job over the last 15 years, helping students to identify what are the options, especially for those of you who grew up in Asia, like myself. By the way, I grew up in Singapore. I was born and raised there, went through the entire education, came to the US here in 1995, and have the opportunity to go through my university experience here in the US. But what I've learned is that in the US, with over 5,300 universities, how do you go about selecting the best university for yourself? So with that, 
I would like to focus on the main topic for today is how do you go about selecting the university of your choice, especially when there are so many options out there. So I'm going to head back to my PowerPoint presentation here. There we go. Make it into a full slide. So over the years, I met with a lot of students, a lot of parents who have chose to use some of these nine most common ways to evaluate a university. But today we are going to look at university from a different angle. All right. And we're going to approach it from three angles, right? Primarily faculty, which means professor. Number two, course curriculum. And number three, activities and facility. Now, obviously, there are a lot of different ways where an individual student could look at to decide if whether a university is suitable for them or not. But for the purpose of this presentation, I will only focus on these three, the faculty, course curriculum, activities, and facilities. All right, let's talk about number one, faculty. What do I mean by that? All right. So let me use uh, a particular university in the US as a case example, okay? With that, I'm gonna head to their website here. Let's see here, very good. Okay, now to begin, you are looking at the website of Babson College, all right? How many of you here have actually even heard of Babson College, all right? Now, they're probably one of the best business schools in the U.S. Now, there are many of you out there who may know University of Pennsylvania, all right, UPenn, Wharton School of Business as the top business rank university in the U.S. But very, very few people know that within business itself, there are several umbrellas of specialization, primarily accounting, you have finance, you have management, you have entrepreneurship, and Babson happens to be the number one top ranking university that offers entrepreneurship as their major, all right? So if you have time, please go check out their website, all right? They are located in Babson. Remember one of the three questions that I asked you? If you have never heard of it, does it mean that it's not a good school? Not necessarily. All right, so the only way we can know if a school is good or not is by doing our due diligence, is going deep into their website and dig out as much information as we can to learn more about the university. So with Babson College, let's look at the faculty. And what do I mean by that? So whenever I'm meeting a student at Green River College, through our advising session, typically I would ask a student, which university would you like to go to? So if somebody randomly says, hey, I want to go to Babson College, then the first question I would ask them is, why Babson College? What do you know about the school? So one of the ways whereby a student or parent or myself can evaluate if that is a good school or not is to find out the profile of the professor or the faculty. Because how good you're gonna be in the future is strictly dependent on how good a professor is at the university. So how do we find out or extract that information from a school's website? And I'm going to do a demonstration right now. So go to any particular uh, school website that you're interested uh, in exploring. So in this case, I'm using Babson College as an example. And I would go into one of their department. So every university in the world has what we call department, for example, engineering, business, psychology, computer science. All right. So I'm going to randomly pick, um, say, business here. All right. So I'm going to pick business school here. Let's see if I can find business school. Concentration of focus. Let's see. Faculty. Okay, let's pick finance as an example because I know there's a lot of you out there who might want to study finance uh, uh, in the near future. 
So what I'm looking out for is faculty right here. All right, so I'm looking out for keywords because what I'm really interested right now in the process of my research is to find out who are these professors that are teaching at this university and what are their credentials. So right in front of you, all right, shortly, you will see that there are a lot of professors that are currently teaching at this particular college, all right, Babson College. So in order for me or any particular student to know if this is a good university or not, I would randomly pick a profile of a professor and decide myself, hey, you know what? Who will I be learning from? How long has all these professors been teaching? And the other thing I will probably look at is where did the professor graduated from? How long have they had their PhD? And how long have they been teaching at the university? because that will tell me if a professor has experience or not. And the other thing I would like to know is if the professor is doing any consulting work outside of the university. Because personally, as a student, I do not want a professor that strictly academics only. That means they only teach and do research and nothing else. Because I want a professor that's also engaged in the specific industry within my field so that I can learn what the professor have learned as a result of his contact outside of the university, which I believe is very, very important. So I'm gonna randomly pick this professor here who teaches entrepreneurship, gender, teaching, decision-making. And this, uh, her name is Lakshmi, and she's an associate professor uh, under the Department of Entrepreneurship. So I'm gonna click on more. Let's, uh, by the way, this is live, this is not scripted, all right? So I'm very interested to read more about this particular professor. Now, straight away, what draws my attention is this particular professor, Lakshmi, right, got her MBA from MIT and her bachelor's degree from Chicago, and she got her PhD from Boston. Pretty cool, all right? And there's obviously a lot of other information about the particular university that you can look at to decide, wow, what are some of the experiences and skill set can this professor offer to me as a student in order for me to decide if this is a school that I would like to go to in the future, all right? Let me pick one more profile, all right, for the purpose of this uh, presentation. Let's pick somebody from, let me see here. How about this Ellen, all right? Uh, and her interest topic is exp expertise in multicultural literature, Victorian novel and creative writing, critical theory, and just literature, All right? So I'm interested to learn more about her. So I'm gonna click on her profile. And you can obviously read through that. All right, which university did she graduate from? How long have they been teaching? And what courses they are teaching? Because all these profile of the faculty, it really tells us a lot about the quality of the education that you will be getting from this particular university. All right, I'm gonna pick one last one. Uh, John, all right, John, who's the adjunct faculty who teaches risk analysis, raising capital, and project finance. And let's see what is the profile of Professor John. Uh, Professor John has more than 30 years experience in corporate and project finance serving the global energy power, mineral, blah, blah, blah. Very, very impressive, all right? And Professor John actually got his MBA from Duffmouth College. Now, if you remember, Dartmouth College is also one of the eight Ivy League schools in the U.S. So you tell me, right, does this school have a good profile of professors or faculty that will be able to teach you your subject area? So this is one of the options or one of the methods that I help students to, to identify or to extract information from a school website to help them to evaluate or decide if this is a good school for them or not. Because if you just purely look at ranking, location, weather, and scholarship, all right, you might be missing out on a lot of other details that might be critical in your decision-making process. All right? Now, let me head back to my PowerPoint presentation here. So the second thing we're going to look at is... By the way, it's very challenging trying to bounce back and forth uh, between different windows in, uh, in Zoom. So bear with me, all right? Thank you very much. So now that we have looked at faculty, what is the second 
way we can, what is the second method that we can use to decide if a university is good or not? So we're going to look at course curriculum. And what does it mean by course curriculum? All right. So with that, I'm going to use Purdue University, all right, which is located in West Lafayette, Indiana, which is also the university that I graduated from. And look at their course curriculum for mechanical engineering uh, within the School of Engineering. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with Purdue University, they sent the, their very first, our very first man to the moon back in 1960 plus. All right, they have a fantastic computer science and aerospace engineering. So I'll be pulling up their website shortly and all these are available within your fingertips. All right, uh, if you were to Google all the different details. So I did a little bit of prep work and managed to pull out the course curriculum of the degree program at Purdue University specifically for mechanical engineering. Now, some of you might find this a little bit daunting in terms of what is this all this graph all about, all right? So uh, to make it simple for you to understand, if you look on the left-hand column, um, it takes four years to get a bachelor's degree in the US. So in this case, it takes four years to get a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And there are two semester in a year so it takes about eight semester or four years to complete a bachelor's degree. And within each semester or each year, this particular department actually laid out all the classes that you would have to take in order for you to graduate with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look closely at all the specific classes that you would have to take if you were to select this program, now, some of the questions that I would challenge students to ask themselves. Number one is, do I have a lot of flexibility to pick and choose the classes that I want to take? Now, obviously, there's a core classes that you have that you would have to take as an engineer. But on top of that, how much flexibility do you have in terms of choosing the classes for yourself or classes that you're interested in taking or in in finance or economics because a student might be thinking you know what besides being an engineer I might want to do business in the future as well all right now once you have asked that question another second question that you could ask yourself is within all these classes that are presented to you will it give you the specific knowledge and skill set for you to go out and comp compete in the global job market all right. So if you're going to be an engineer, all right, think about it. All right. If you have taken calculus, math, linear algebra, differential equation, mechanics of material, structure of properties and material, engineering design, thermodynamics, would that make you a better engineer? All right. So if you were to compare this course curriculum versus another course curriculum at another university for the same major, mechanical engineering in this case. I can bet you there will be some slight variation. Now that slight variation would probably be the distinction between whether you're gonna pick school A or B because every program within each university are set up a little bit differently depending on the faculty. So this is something that a lot of students who are in the process of selecting university actually overlook because many, many students or parents will look into ranking. They will look in lo into location. They will look into uh, tuition fee. They will look into the weather. That they will probably be studying and look at co course curriculum and identify what are the courses that I will be taking as a student. But more importantly, you could also ask, how many classes do I have to take? If this particular university requires, say, 45 classes total for you to graduate versus another university that requires 50, all right? So that's five extra classes. Does it mean more money, more time, 
But on the contrary, it might give you more experiences and knowledge for you to be a better student or a graduate. So there's a lot of things that you can think about just by assessing the course curriculum of a university. So I highly encourage all of you who are logged in live today or those who are watching um, us from Facebook later on to go into the individual school's website or university website that you are interested in attending and truly look at the course curriculum or also known as graduation requirement to look at the specific classes that you would have to take in order for you to graduate with a bachelor's degree. Now, there are many students who are fixated about the name of the degree. For example, let me give it a classic example. I have a lot of students who like to get into an argument with me with specifically about getting a degree in computer science versus a degree in information technology. All right. Those are basically labels. All right. They are just an identifier. All right. What truly makes a program good or not good is not just the label itself, but the nitty gritty, which is the meat of the program, which is the course curriculum. So many of you out there, if you're doing your research, say, for example, you want to study computer science in order for you to identify if a school or a program is truly good or not. All right. Besides looking at the profile of the professor, I would highly, highly recommend that you log in into the school's website. All right. To that particular major and look at the course curriculum and identify what are the courses that you have to take in order for you to be successful and in order for you to graduate with a bachelor's degree in your specific major. All right. I'm going to stop my screen share right here. All right, so what else can we use to identify if a particular university is suitable for you or whether is it good or not for you? All right, so with that, I'm going to head back to my PowerPoint presentation here. There we go. So we have talked about faculty. We have talked about course curriculum. Now, the other variable that we can use or look at is activity or facility. You know, from my own experience, um, you know, studying in the U.S. and having worked and lived here for so many years and having advised thousands, if not hundreds of international students, I find that a lot of students uh, does not quite understand, you know, the experience that they will gain and the transformation that they're going to go through uh, within the three or four years of their life at the university. In fact, by far, to me, this is probably one of the most critical components to dictate if you will have a good experience and be successful in the future or not. Um, just to share with you, um, you know, having lived in the U.S. for more than 20 over years, um, whenever I go for a particular job interview in the past, um, I've never been asked for my transcript or how many B's or A's I have achieved in my lifetime or even during my university or which university I graduated from, all right? In order for you to be successful, I truly believe from my own experience, all right, not only does the degree and, and which university matters, but ultimately what truly matters is all the soft skill that you're gonna develop along the way, all right? At any particular university, not only just in the US, all right? So all the, what do I mean by soft skill? Soft skill, I, I'm referring to, for example, communication skill. How are you going to communicate with people from different language, culture, and religion, right? Number two, how are you going to uh, leverage your strengths and weaknesses? How are you going to market yourself when you go for your very first interview? All right. So all these skill sets will be acquired, learned, and developed during your years at the university. And that's why it is very, very critical, in my opinion, to select a university that can offer you that kind of environment to nurture you to become the person that you want to be. Um, there are three specific skill sets that I personally think uh, that are lacking in a lot of our international students, uh, primarily from Asia. Um, those trees are number one, communication skill, uh, number two, social skill, and number three, critical thinking skill. 
which is the ability to be able to make decision at a specific time and place, whether it's right or wrong. Now, a lot of our students from Asia particularly, all right, ever since they are a kid, you know, their parents would tell them to go to school and study hard, all right? All they have to do is go to school and study hard. And very few of them have the exposure or the experience that they need in order for, for them to thrive in the global economic world. So if we keep striving for a number or grade to help us to get to a good university, ultimately, how are you going to acquire the skill set in order for you to be successful in the global workforce? And that's why the three or four years that you're going to spend at a university is extremely critical in your own development to become the person that you want to be in the future. All right. So how do you go about researching um, universities that can offer you that kind of experiences, that kind of activities, that kind of facility that will allow you to grow into the adult that you want to be. So with that, I will show you um, Green River website, which is my school's website. I'm just going to use my school as an example, not that you have to. Um, so within the school website, all right, and you could spend hours and hours looking at a particular school's website to look at what kind of facilities are offered at a particular school. What is the demographics of the university? Now, why is demographic such a critical um, variable in the decision-making process when it comes to selecting a university? Because you can ask yourself, do I want to go to a big university? For example, like the school that I went to, Purdue University has about, I believe at that time, 80,000 students versus Green River that has 10,000 students. Now, if you were to go to a school that has 80,000 uh, 80, students, right, you'll probably be going into a lecture hall that can sit about one to 2,000 students. Very big lecture hall. Do you prefer that kind of studying environment versus going to maybe a smaller school like Green River that has an average class size of 25? How different would your experience be between going to a big school versus a small school? Now, you also have to assess your own personality and your own character, right? How sociable are you? If not, how are you going to thrive in a university has, that has 80,000 students? Now, are you better off going to a smaller school like Green River that provides you with a much smaller population for you to make friends, right, in a different way? How about sports facility, right? For those of you who play sports out there, or in order for you to be mentally and physically fit, what are some of the facilities that are offered at a particular university? So these are some of the things that I would highly recommend that you think about. And what about clubs and activities? What are some of the clubs that are available to you as a student in order for you to occupy your time, especially on a weekend or even after school? Because universities do not want you to be book smart just to go to school and study hard. They want you to make a contribution to our world because how successful a school will be in the future is also dependent on their graduates, how their life has impacted an individual, a community, or the world upon graduation. All right. I'm gonna go back to my slide here. So with that, I hope I have kind of give you a short introduction on some of the things that typically a lot of the students that I've met have never considered when it comes to looking into a university. So just to recap, identifying the profile, the experience, the history, the credential of our faculty or professor is very, very important because ultimately, you are just as good as the person that's teaching you. The second thing that we explored today was course curriculum, which I also truly believe is a criti very critical component when assessing a university. To look at what classes do you have to take and what will those classes give you the experience all right, and knowledge for you to go out and do whatever you want to do in the future. And last but not least, I would like you to take a look 
and all the different activities and facilities that will be offered to you as a student. All right. So with that, uh, it's about 11.40 uh, Malaysian time right now. All right. So I would invite um, all of you who are logged in right now from anywhere or any other platform to ask me any questions that you may have about the topic that I just presented today. All right. So for those who are logging in Zoom, please feel free to use the chat window. And I'm sure uh, Zoe and those over at EduExpert will be monitoring the platform over at Facebook. Yep, that's right. Hey, thanks, Elvin. Thanks for the insights and all the tips about choosing the right university. So while we're waiting for questions to come in, oh, there's a question already. Okay. So I have a question here from... Uh, <laughs> Hi Abbas, how are you? Actually, I know one of, the, the, one of these participants here. So the question is, is there any possibility for a student to go to Ivy League schools through Green River College? Okay, all right, so I'm going to stop share right here and go to my school's website here really quickly. Uh, let's go to Green River website. Okay, so the question is, what is the possibility of students going to Ivy League school from Green River College? All right, so let me just go to one of the website here. All right, so we have here at Green River have a fantastic, fantastic university transfer program. Now, within second click, all right, you can see in front of you on your right, we have Ivania from Indonesia transferring to Cornell University, which is one of the Ivy League schools in the US. But what I want to show you is actually a, a list of all the different universities um, all the different universities that our students have transferred to over the last 15 years. And you have a big list right here and you will see a whole list of schools that are within the Ivy League school curriculum. All right, by the way, I'm going to drop this link um, on, the, uh, on the chat group. So for those of you who are interested in exploring more, in terms of what are some of the universities that students have transferred from Green River College or from any other schools, please go ahead and um, uh, take, click, take a look at that link, all right? So uh, Abbas, my uh, answer to your question is yes, we have a lot of students that have transferred to Ivy League schools and many other top universities as well in the US from Green River College, all right? So the question, uh, another question that I got from here is which colleges are best known for mathematics now um this is a very interesting question all right so if whenever i get this question say for example if i'm meeting a student right now who posed this question to me um i obviously have my preference on top of my head i could name quite a few obviously mit you have caltech georgia tech you have carnegie mellon uiuc university of michigan uh, these are some of the top schools that are highly ranked in the uh, mathematics department but does it mean that you're restricted only to those 10 or 15 schools that I am offering you? Because my memory only has limited capacity. Now, remember, there are 5,300 colleges and university. How are you going to go about choosing the university of your choice? So this is what I would recommend uh, for whoever uh, is posting this question. Because if you ask me which school is the best, I will give you my opinion. If you ask 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers. Sometimes you're probably better off doing your own research. So very simple. Probably Google is your best, best dictionary. All right. Best source of information. So I'm just going to go type in best uh, mathematics, uh, mathematics uh, university in the world or in the USA. And I'm sure you will get a whole list an entire website of universities that are highly ranked in in, uh, in mathematics. But the other some the other things you have to consider also. Um, I, I just want to. Uh, I'm not going to name name, but I had a student um, about a couple of years ago from Malaysia who got accepted to Columbia University, right? Which is a fantastic school. It's one of the Ivy League school, but chose not to go there. Why? Because the tuition fee is close to seventy five thousand us dollar a year it's very expensive and and this particular student of mine also happens to prefer schools that are um smaller in size so the other thing i would like you to consider is a matter of fit all right 
Is the school a good fit for yourself? It does not mean that if a school is expensive or highly ranked, it's suitable for you. There are many, many factors that you can consider before you decide if a school is good for you or not. All right. For example, um, I, I'm just going to throw out this name here again. Right. Harvey Mudd College. Now, for some of you in Malaysia, right, if you were to graduate from this school and head back home, how many employers or how many of your friends or how many companies out there truly, truly know this Harvey Mudd College? And it does not mean that it's not a good school. The question is within the context of your industry and where you're from, your environment, does this university or college work for you? So these are some of the questions that you would have to entertain and ask yourself, all right? I'm going to move on to the next question here by looking at um, the chat window here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, by the way, I'm going to throw in one more link here, which is what are some of the majors that are offered at Green River or for most universities? And from there, you can do your own research to decide if that is a university for you or not. Because there's no point going to a university that does not offer your major, even if it's highly ranked. All right. So I'm going to throw that into the chat window over here. Okay, so Chloe, uh, it says, good morning. Just a quick question, but should scholarship come into account in choosing university? If so, how do we identify which scholarship we actually need? Okay, now there is a lot of misconception about what scholarship actually needs. Let me give you an example, all right? So let's say uh, I'm just going to use um, Columbia University. At, no, let's just use um, UC Berkeley or UCLA, all right? Uh, very good school, very good university in California. Uh, the tuition fee plus all total costs, including lodging, comes up to about 65,000 US dollars, okay? So keep that number in mind, 65 US thousand dollars. Now, if you're a good student, they might throw in a scholarship to you. Say, for example, 20,000 US dollars. You're like, wow, I'm getting a $20,000 scholarship. That's pretty cool. All right. But at the end of the day, you would still have to pay them $45,000. So that is your out of your pocket cost. All right. Now, the other thing when it comes to scholarship and money is you really need to talk to your parents or whoever is supporting you financially with regards to your study abroad experience because you really need money in order for you to be able to study abroad. Now, for some of you who are thinking about getting full scholarship and or working full time or uh, in the US or somewhere else or other countries to supplement the full cost of your study, it's going to be very difficult because your job is to go abroad and study, not to work and support your family or support yourself. So financial factor is probably one of the most important things that you would have to consider as a student. So please, please, please discuss with your parents. So back to scholarship again. So if UCLA or UC Berkeley charges you $65,000, but they're throwing in a $20,000 scholarship for you, naturally you'll feel really, really good about yourself that you have been awarded a $20,000 $20, scholarship, but at the end of the day, you would have to pay them $25,000. All right. So using my school as an example, all right, the total cost of attending Green River is twenty-one US thousand dollars. Without even me giving you scholarship from Green River College, I'm way more affordable because there are five thousand three hundred universities and colleges in the U.S. Your range of tuition will go anywhere from seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars per year, everything included, up to eighty thousand dollars. All right. So the range and the spectrum is very, very wide. So for those of you who are thinking about scholarship, I don't want you to think about just scholarship in terms of how much you're going to get. I want you to think about at the end of the day, how much are you paying that university? Is it worth it? Can you afford it? All right. Now, don't get me wrong. Scholarships are a great thing. All right. Many uh, universities are throwing out scholarships out there to attract students to supplement their tuition fee. Um, but something for you to consider is what is the criteria for application, how difficult it is for you to get a scholarship, because not every student will get a scholarship. All right. So most of the scholarships are posted on the school's website. Um, so using Green River as an example, all right, I'm going to help you to navigate um, any particular school website, not just Green River. So in this case, there's always a search function within a university. All right, so just go ahead and click scholarship. 
I'm gonna click scholarship here. Boom, you get a whole bunch of results and I'll probably just randomly pick the first one as an example. So we have an international student scholarship and work grant. So I'm just gonna glance through it here. Oh, we have achievement, merit, leadership scholarship that range between two to $500. We have another um, ISA scholarship that's worth up to $1,000. So within each university, there are a lot of different scholarships that you, you are eligible to apply for, and there are a lot of different requirements. So feel free to go do your own research uh, as, uh, as part of the process on uh, searching for a university. So there's a lot of uh, information that you can get from a school's website. So I would highly, highly recommend that you would include scholarship as one of your variables. All right, thank you very much. Now I'm going to throw in this link again. This is the Green River uh, Scholarship um, website. At least you could use Green River as a starting base to look at, okay, how do I go about navigating scholarship? How much will I be getting? All right, so if you're interested in applying to say MIT and you want to look into their scholarships options, please feel free to go to that particular school's website. All right, always go to the primary source of the university that you want to go to. All right, do we have any more questions here? The answer is absolutely yes, okay? The question is, how much uh, Green River supports students during these two years at Green River, Green River to find their best fit university and colleges for the other half of the undergraduate degree? So this particular uh, participant is uh, targeting questions that are very specific to Green River. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, let me just put it out there. All schools have their strengths and weaknesses, all right? Uh, the intention of every universities and colleges in this entire world is good, all right? Our job as an educator, as a university and college is to educate our young, uh, young students to help and mold them to become who they want to be so that they can go out into the global world and do great works, all right? So the question that has been posted is within that four years or two years or five years, however long that you stay at the university, what kind of support will you get at a university or a college? It's also very, very critical in terms of how you will experience your university uh, uh, days. So again, using Green River as an example again, um, I'm going to go to um, um, my website and you can easily navigate through any school's website is to understand the advising model. This is very important because I have had students who have been to other universities where they get lost because the university is so big because everything is pretty much um, self-reliance that you have to go find information and resources on your own. Because some universities are set up in such a way that they treat you like an adult, they would expect you to be resilient and to be independent to find the information that you need. Now, there are some colleges and universities out there using Green River as an example where you will be attached your very own academic advisor like myself, six years ago when I started my career as an advisor at Green River, I only have one job and my job is to do three things. To number one is to make sure that you international students have the best experience studying in the US and at Green River. Number two is to help them to select university classes so that they can acquire the knowledge that they need for the major. Last but not least, my job is also to help students to apply and successfully transfer to university. And that's in addition to the application itself because we have to meet with or I have to meet with students on a daily basis to help them with the application, to pick the best strategy in selecting and applying to a university. And sometimes I would sit down with the students to go through their personal essay. Now, this is a good time for me to throw this out there also. When you wanna to apply to a university in the US, there are primarily four things that we look at, okay? I'm gonna stop screen share here and actually go to my whiteboard. Uh, Joey, how are we doing in uh, time-wise? Please let me know. We have maximum nine more minutes. All right, nine more minutes. All right, so let me share with you. Uh, this is based on my experience as an academic advisor helping international students transfer to top university. So top university primarily will look at four things, all right, with regards to admissions requirement. Number one is what we call GPA, grade point average, which is basically your grades. Now in the US, it ranges from 0.0, .0 to 4.0. Obviously, the higher the better. But US universities do not only look at GPA, they look at three other things. Unlike my counterpart or some of the universities or some of the education system in Asia or certain parts of the country, where universities only look at academic excellence, 
That means if you have a good score, regardless of everything else, you will be granted admissions into that particular university. But universities in the US has a different approach to admissions criteria. So number one is they will look at your GPA. Number two is what, what I call um, academic preparation, all right? What classes have you taken in the past that have led you to where you are today? All right, are you taking the right classes for your, for your intended major that you're applying to, all right? Very, very critical as well. Now, the other thing that, it, that a university will look at is personal essay, right? It's very, very important for a particular university applicant or student to be able to articulate and showcase their interests, why they're applying to, get, to that university, what will be their potential contribution when they are at that university, and what is the potential for success and contribution upon graduation. So especially if you're applying, in, uh, as a, you're applying to the medical school, for example, you want to become a medical doctor, all right? Heck, how do you talk about you know, yourself and promoting and marketing yourself that you truly, truly want to become a doctor? And part of your personal essay, you might even want to talk about, have you had any prior experience working at a clinic or hospital or have dealt with patients in the past before? So your job is to be able to showcase to the university, why are you the best candidate to be accepted to that faculty or to that university? Last but not least, every university in the US will look at ECA, extracurriculum activity. Right. What else have you done with your life outside of the classroom setting that has made an impact in this world? Or how have your life made this world a better place? Because the only way for any university in the US to assess your potential is to look at what you have done with your life. Because it is very likely that for students who have done something with their life outside a classroom will most likely make a huge contribution while they're studying at the university. And the very same group of students probably will eventually graduate and make an impact in the outside world. So the, the job of a university is to vet, find the best potential candidate that will come to the university not only to study hard, but also to be part of the university and to make a contribution while studying at the university and eventually making a contribution when they move to the global world. So over the last 16 years, when it comes to university application and admissions, personally, I have learned that a lot of students, especially from Asia, um, who have been accepted by, or who has been rejected, by the way, excuse me, who has been rejected by top universities in the UK, for example, Oxford and Cambridge, but who managed to gain admissions to a top university in the US, like Harvard or Stanford and Caltech because the selection or admissions criteria for universities differs from country to country, all right? Certain countries or certain universities would favor academic excellence versus everything else. But I can share with you, based on my experience and having read thousands and thousands of universities' admissions website, I can tell you that majority of universities in the US will focus on these four things to assess if a student has potential for success and whether they will be accepted into the university. All right, so that's kind of a long answer to your question, uh, Abbas. I hope uh, I have explained that. So the bottom line is a school like Green River has an academic advisor that will help our students from day one all the way up to the process to help them to transfer the university. All right, I got another question from Chloe say, uh, asking, are there any misconceptions or stereotypes when coming to which country or colleges, universities are in that we should avoid or take into account? Um, I highly uh, I would say is well known it's I had a student uh, medical student years ago uh, he's from Taiwan 
a graduate with a medical degree from China. However, when he went back to Taiwan, he could not practice uh, as a result of his uh, degree from China. I mean, when I look at his transcript, he had almost 300 hours of surgery experience at that, at that medical school, but he was not able to practice uh, in Taiwan. Now, and he was not uh, allowed to practice in China as well because he holds a Taiwanese passport. So this is just one of the classic example. I, I'm not saying that it happens very, very often, but as far as misconception or stereotype in terms of which country you graduate from, personally, I don't think it will make a huge difference. The, the, the importance of this question is more about which country do you want to gain your study abroad experience from? Because when I was a student at, uh, from Singapore, I applied to four different countries and I picked the US as my first choice for many good reasons that I don't have time to explain to today here in this presentation. So ask yourself, what kind of experience do you want to have? Where do you want to live? What kind of people uh, do, do, you, do you want to mix around with? Uh, what kind of opportunities or facilities do you have? Uh, what are the job opportunities upon graduation? You know, so there's a lot of things that you can ask yourself. please type it in the chat group. If not, Joey, please let me know if I could address more of those questions. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's, there's none that I see right now, but do you okay. have any from Facebook or any other places? Um, no, I, we don't have any questions here. So um, you thank you pass? very much. Yeah, sorry. Okay, we seem to be having a slight connection issue here. Are you still there, Elvin? Yes, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still here. All right. So I think we've answered all the questions. Um, yeah, 12.05. So we will have to close off this session pretty soon. Do you have any final advice for our audience here about anything university selection coming to the US? Oh, actually, by the way, um, can you just spend like 30 seconds to a minute talking about what type of school Green River is? Because I ah. think maybe the audience will have the impression that they're going to come to Green River and graduate from Green River. Yeah. But obviously, that, that's not the kind of arrangement that we're talking about, right? So can you explain how it works? Okay. Um, let me... So green, in the US, as I mentioned before, all right, it takes four years to get your bachelor's degree. Right? Four years to get your bachelor's degree in business, engineering, computer science, you name it. So Green River essentially is the first two years of your university in the US, which means you will, if you choose to come to Green River College or any community colleges or colleges in the US, you will spend the first two years at Green River College in this case. Then we will help you to transfer to a university to complete year three and year four. So all in all, it takes only four years. I'll name you two very famous person that actually went through the community college route. Uh, number one is uh, Obama, uh, our ex-president Obama uh, himself, as well as Steve Jobs. All right. So there are many other famous uh, people that have gone through the community college. In fact, the community college option is very, very common in the U.S. There are close to about 1,300 community colleges, schools like Green River, where students would attend two years and eventually transfer to a university to complete year three and year four. So whether you go through a four-year university, study for four years, or if you come to a school like Green River first, study for two years, then transfer to that particular university, at the end of the four years, your bachelor's degree is identical. There is no difference, all right? Okay, and tell us a little bit about the cost advantage of this model. Cost advantage of this model. How okay, much money so can parents expect to save? Wow, just like a, a ballpark uh, versus say UCLA or, or or one of the Ivy Leagues. Okay, let's see if I can pull this one out here. Let me do cost analysis. Welcome to Green River College. Um, a minute here while I get to it. Okay. All right. So without 
explaining too much. I think diagram uh, picture speaks a thousand words. All right. If you had gone directly to University of Michigan, the university that's on the extreme left, all right, you would have paid fifty thousand U.S. dollar per year just on tuition itself. All right. And Green River's total tuition per year is only ten thousand, a difference of forty thousand dollars. You're saving about forty thousand dollars if you choose Green River versus University of Michigan. At the end of the four years, your your degree would still be the same. So the cost savings is actually very very significant if you are comparing the Ivy League school or some of the high end schools in the U.S. So, which is also one of the main reasons why schools like Green River, a college, has been very, very popular, not only among Americans, but among international students to step foot or to start their educational option or career at a school like Green River first, get their two years education out of the way, then transfer to a university to complete year three and year four. All right. Thank you very much, Elvin. So, um... Thanks to the audience for your participation and for your questions. Thanks, Elvin, for coming on board um, the summit. Um, Thank we'll you very be... much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll close off the session. Uh, we are pasting the link um, to get your feedback. So please spend a couple of minutes to fill up the survey form. Um, our next session starts in 20 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about uh, the Dutch education system. So if you are tuning in from Malaysia, that will be 12.30. If you are tuning in from Japan, uh, that will be 1.30 your local time. So we'll see you back here in 20 minutes time. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Well. Right. Have a great weekend. All right. Good luck to all of you. So please contact me if you have any questions. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.